morning. How you guys doing? It is thankful Thursday. Praise God, we made it in the land of the living. We on top of the grass instead of underneath it. Glory to God, glory to God. Um, how you guys doing this morning? Hope you guys had a good night, a good worship on yesterday, on Worship Wednesday, you took time out to just love on God. Today we are just being thankful for the things that he's done, the things that he's doing, and the things that he's getting ready to do. Good morning, Daryl. Good morning. Um, your, your, kid, your father's on here, you guys. Hey, Dad. Um, so today, on Thankful Thursday, what we're going to talk about is when God created you, when God created your purpose, he included your mistakes. So I thought that was something to talk about because last night I was in a place where I was just thinking about the mistakes that I had made and how I was feeling as though those mistakes that I made um, may have hindered me in certain areas, right? Because I started to see um, in certain areas um, I couldn't infiltrate, I couldn't get into, right? I couldn't, in, in certain circles, I, I, my name was like dirt in that, in those circles, based on the mistake that I made, based on the connection or the circle that I entered into. And I started to feel limited. And I was like, God, if I could take it all back, if I could do things over, I would. And then God said, I included that in my purpose. And he, he also told me, he said, I gave you intel on those circles during your mistake so that you would know that I didn't want you in that circle. I didn't want you a part of that. That's that's not a limitation for you. That's a that that is a boundary I set for you so that you don't get hurt, so that you don't go into a place that I don't want you in. Your your the limitations, I have no limitations. I hear God telling me there's no limitations on me. So if when the time is right, I can soften their heart if need be, but right now I need you just to be concerned about the path that you're on and not concerned about if there's a limitation or not, or not concerned about your mistake because I included your mistake in the purpose I have for your life. So today I wanted to just tell you how thankful I am or tell God how thankful I am that he included that, that that mistake doesn't count me out of my purpose, that it doesn't erase what he had planned for me. That he included that. God told me that I was even in the midst of your mistake. I was working things out even in the midst of that. So many times we lose our self-worth. We lose who we are because of a mistake we may, have, we may have made or what somebody has spoken about us. We lose our self-worth. We forget that God had a purpose for everything. When when we read the Bible, we forget that he says um, all things will work for the good of those who believe. So all things are going to be used for the glory of God. Right? So when you're, I don't know if many people have had the moments like I had last night. But it was just a moment where I was like literally in tears. was like, God, I, I, if I could take it back. Because I feel like this mistake is keeping me from doing what you set me out to do. I feel like that mistake, entering into that one mistake and keeping it going, hindered me from doing what you purposed me to do. Because I know God said I will give you the desires of my heart. The desires of my heart is to serve people. And it's certain areas um, I would like to be in. Like, I see myself... You know, um, being in the political system, I see myself being in arenas where I'm helping um, young women and, and, and men. I see myself in those places. These are desires of my heart. But I said, Lord, because of this mistake in this area, in this region, my name is dirt. <laughs> Literally, my name is dirt. People don't respect me. People don't respect my name because of the mistake that I made. And some of those people are in the circles that I was like, Lord, this is where I, I feel like I'm supposed to be. This person is in the um, political arena. I can learn a lot from them, you know, but God was like, remember, I gave you intel about that person. 
I gave you intel about the whole bloodline. I gave you intel about that so that you can stay away from that. That's not the only way to get to where I, I will need you to go. That's the enemy trying to trick your mind to think that you're limited, that, that the only way to get to where I need you to go is this way. But no, I'm trying to direct your path the right way. That's not the path that you should be going. So again, I want to talk to those people who may have had those moments where you lost your self-worth. You really didn't feel like you were worthy because of a mistake that you made, because of something that somebody spoke into you that you started to believe. I want you to know that God says, I still have purpose for you. I included what they said about you. I included what they their hearts and how it gets hardened um, towards you. I included your um, your mistakes. I included everything that you went through. I included everything that's surrounded by you in your purpose. And if you keep your mind focused on me, you won't have to worry about any of those things because that is a part of my plan. Isn't it wonderful to serve a God who has a purpose like that, who has no matter what you go through, that is included in his plan and he has purpose for it. This is again why we talked about, I believe on Monday, you give thanks in everything, even the bad. And the enemy was trying to attack my mind last night, trying to make me feel like you, you're you not going to be what God says you are. You're not going to get into the place that God said you're going to be in. You doubt God because the way it's looking right now, you're not connected where you need to be connected to. You know, he, he, he fills your mind with doubt about who you are. And it's up to you to have a conversation with God. And literally, this is what I do when the enemy tries to fill my mind with stuff that goes against God. I go right to God. God, did you say that? Is, is that really the case? And God has to reassure me every time. And I know sometimes he get kind of fed up with me because <laughs> I'm always like, God, I just want to make sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I heard you right. I just want to make sure that what he's feeding me in my mind is not right. I just want to make sure. And I, God is like, I just told you this two minutes ago. I just told you this yesterday. I thought, I thought we had this covered. I thought you were okay. But just like a father, he reminds me, you know, that yes, this is what I said about you. Nothing is going to change that. Nothing is going to um, end this connection between you and I. Nothing. The only person that can end this connection between you and I is you. The only one that can have you step out of your purpose is you. And the only way you can do that is by believing what the enemy is trying to feed you. By eating on the seed that he's trying to plant in your mind. Glory to God. Glory to God. So today we're just talking about um, on uh, Thankful Thursday. We are talking about when God created your purpose, he included your mistakes. He included your mistakes. He included the things that you were going to do wrong. He knew. You think that God didn't know that um, David and Samson were going to have women as their issue when he chose them? You think he didn't know that? You guys have a great day. I love y'all. You gotta wash your hair tonight because you get your hair cut tomorrow. Um, yeah, so you think God didn't know those things about David and Samson? You think God didn't know that they were going to make those mistakes when he called them, when he, he put them into their purpose, when he made um, he made David the lineage of uh, Jesus Christ? You think he didn't know that he was going to make these mistakes? He used that, you know? So know that if every God sees your purpose, he doesn't see your mistakes. And I'm so, so grateful and so thankful today that that is how he sees me, that he sees my purpose and not my mistakes. So many times we harp on our mistakes and forget our purpose. And that's the trickery of the enemy. He wants us to think about what we did wrong. See, God didn't come to condemn us. 
He wants to think about us to constantly be reminded of the things that we've done wrong. Because if he can keep us in that place, if he can keep reminding us of who we thought we were not, that will keep us from getting to the purpose. Because we'll never look forward, we'll always be looking back. We'll pretty much be walking through life backwards. Never being able to see what's in front of us. But because we're too busy looking back. We're too busy focused on what we didn't have or what somebody didn't give us or what we did say or what we didn't say or what mistake we did do. And I'm here to tell you that you don't you don't have to focus on that. You're better than that. God purposed you for a reason. When he thought the place when your mother's womb, he had a whole reason, a whole purpose set out for you. And that's, that's my that's my struggle. That's my battle. I have to always correct my, my thinking about how I view the things that I've done. You know, um, instantly when you get into this walk with God, the first thing the enemy uh, works on is you, you can't be here. Look at all the things that you've done. Look at all the mistakes that you've made. And, and God is still tugging at you, saying, I don't, I don't care about that. <laughs> That, that has nothing to do. I'm right where you are. I was there in those mistakes. And the fact that you know that he was there is because you're still here. Right? You're, you still got another opportunity to get this thing right. God is not done with you. This is how you know that he was still there in your mistakes because you're still here. That means that God is not done with you. He still has something for you to do. He still has a purpose that you haven't fulfilled yet. And you're going to do that regardless of what mistake that you made. Regardless of what people are saying about you. Regardless of what connections you haven't made. Because the thing about that is those connections are not the only connections. There's other places God may have need for you to, to tread. Other areas he need for your foot, your feet to step into. So to God give thanks and everything. And I'm, man, I, I literally, like I said, I was in tears last night because I just wanted to tell God I was so sorry for every mistake I've made. Please don't take me from my purpose. Please don't put somebody else in my place. God was like, that's not what purpose is. For me to miss, replace you. As long as you're following me, your purpose is going to be fulfilled. You are the only one that can change what I have planned for you by not choosing to go in a direction in which I lead you. so powerful. I, I love him. I really do. I really do. Man. So good morning, you guys. I want to take time out to just tell you good morning. Um, and tell you how much I appreciate you. How much, how grateful I am that you are taking time out of your morning to tune in with me. To hear what God has to say. And it's not by accident that you're tuning in here. Don't think that you're just, you know, tuning in just because or, you know, um, it's something to do. No, God had a word for you. If he didn't mean for you to be here, you wouldn't be connected to me. If he didn't mean for you to hear this word, you wouldn't be connected to me. So this is how I know that the things that I'm saying you're relating to because it's not by accident you're here. I'm not the only one who's been in that place where mistakes has kept me from moving forward because I've been too busy focused on what I did instead of what God is doing. So today, take that time to think about what God is doing in your life. Let go of what you've done. It's gone. It's done. There's nothing you can do about it. Keep your focus off what people are doing or what people are saying and focus on what God is doing, what God is saying. Get confirmation. He does. He does do that. He always sent confirmation. And like I told you, me and God have conversations where 
I'm always checking with him. Lord, the enemy has fed this into my mind. I, I hear this in my mind. God, is that you? Can you talk to me? Can you love on me right now? And he answers every time. He answers every time. In whatever capacity I need him to be. So I'm just asking you today to try him. Try him. Glory to God. Watcher says, God will renew um, you in a right mind, in a right spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Glory. I'm hot. <laughs> it's so cold man I'm so ready for this winter to be over so <laughs> I hate the cold man well I'm going to leave you here then when we move uh-oh. <laughs> you just got to be in tune with the nature. In tune with the nature. You got to be connected with the nature. Uh-huh, with the seasons and everything. <laughs> Your dad is laughing at you. <laughs> I'm sitting her in New York, so she liked the cold. I'm sitting her there because I'm moving and I'm sitting her there. But, um... Yeah, so today what we were talking about, you guys, is that God included your mistakes with your purpose. He included that. He, he included that with your, um with your purpose like your mistakes doesn't stop you recognize your worth Re recognize that um when he sent jesus to die for us right when he sent god to die on i mean sent jesus to die on a cross for us it was for your mistakes there you go baby okay. so he he included that he did he knew that you were going to do what you did Read the Bible. The the many mistakes that they've done, and they're still, their name has is like a name that will never die. <laughs> they are known everywhere because of their purpose, regardless of their mistakes. Have a great day, babe. You too. We don't we don't call um, David um, the adulterer. We don't call him that, even though that's what he did. We don't call him a murderer, even though that's what he did. Right? That's not what he's known by. We know that David was a mighty um, king. Jesus came through his lineage. We know that he killed Goliath as a kid. We, those are the things we really remember him by. We hardly ever talk about the fact that he killed another man to have his wife. Right? We talk about the strength of Samson. We, we don't talk about the fact that um, the reason why he was able to be conquered the way he was was because he fell in love with a woman that wasn't he wasn't supposed to be with. She was his weakness. We don't we don't talk about the weaknesses of people, right? We don't glorify those things. God doesn't glorify those things. He he didn't give any glory to the things that they were that was were their weakness. He mentioned it so you can relate, so you can know that I can still use that mistake. That's the reason why those things were mentioned. Those, that's the reason why those things were brought up in the Bible. So you can understand that God doesn't just choose perfect people. His purpose for people is not, he doesn't look for people that are perfect. Because he will find none. No one would be able to carry out what he needs to get carried out. If he chose perfect people. God knew that we weren't perfect. you know but anyway so um that's what i wanted to talk about today because it was way heavy on me last night um and and i literally woke up this morning just thankful just thankful that you know that mistake that i made didn't take me out um so many other mistakes that i made didn't take me out when i think about so many things i've done that could have been detrimental that could have been death for me the situation could have been death for me but god showed me grace and mercy this is why i have these tatted on my hands because grace and mercy is what covered me my entire life and it's still covering me right now because i honor and i worship god and i and i trust 
that in area of my in every every area of my life he's using is there moments where that trust don't seem so strong there are there are moments where i'm just like okay god maybe maybe this one right here this mistake right here is really gonna stop me maybe this one is the one where you be like you know what i don't know if i can forgive that one I have those moments, and I don't know if you ever have those moments, but I just have those moments where I get really down on myself sometimes and, and think about how could I have been so foolish? How could I let the enemy really get me in that area? How could I have really thought that this, this behavior, this was okay? How could I let something like this cause me to compromise my morals, my integrity, my soul? How could I have been so foolish? This is, this is what I'm saying to myself. And God is like, You're, you were going to make mistakes. I used this. I knew that this was going to happen. I knew that this was going to be a weakness of yours. I knew this. But in this purpose, it's not going to matter. It matters because I'm going to use it to build you. But it's really not something you should keep looking back to. I need you to move forward. I need you to get go and keep your mind focused and not walk in this life backwards, but always move forward. And, and be like David. It was good that I was afflicted. Understand that, that that mistake served a purpose. Praise God. Praise God. Right. Right, Walter. Um, so let me go ahead and pray for you guys. So um, our Father, which I never before I get in tears, because <laughs> I'm getting emotional about this. Because um, you, you ever have those moments where you just really feel like, okay, I'm, I'm free. Like, I cannot go back to the way I was regardless of what anybody else has to say about me regardless of how they see me regardless of what circle um, I've been ex excluded from regardless of that I'm free right anybody ever have that feeling and it brings you to a, a, a very emotional state because you like you feel a weight being lifted off your shoulders like a weight that you, you just can't imagine like I was talking to my friend the other day and I was like, um, I'm sorry, I did start the prayer, but I just want to get this out. I was talking to my friend the other day and I said, literally, when I was in this mess, when I was in this relationship that I knew was not of God, my shoulders and my back was so heavy, was so heavy. Like I literally felt like I was carrying rocks or bricks or something on my shoulders I would always be sitting at my desk trying to get it off like just trying to move you know or trying to figure out like what's going on with my bed why is everything why does my back and my shoulders feel so heavy like what is going on like I really could I was like maybe I need to go to the doctor but then I started okay let me go soak in something let me try to get into somebody's you know huge jacuzzi or something or let me get a massage or but it was not going away it just was not leaving. But the minute I felt like I was free, then when I heard God say, you've been set free, and I went running through the house, that whole weight off my shoulders. I, I no longer have felt those rocks on my shoulders. I felt so much lighter, literally, like my body. I, it, it amazed me that hearing those words set my body free. Not just not just my situation but my body how how things that you go through how stress can affect the body how everything is connected right I, I never even thought about that I really thought it was the bed mind you I had just bought the bed it was brand new I was like maybe I got it too hard maybe it's not soft enough I'm I'm trying to think about everything else except except for the, the fact that I was in a situation that I wasn't supposed to be in and that what was, was what was what weighing heavy on me. That what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. But the minute I let go and gave up 
my will to God and said now his will and not mine that weight lifted off my shoulders literally lifted off my shoulders and whenever I feel it getting heavy I'm like Lord it's something on me I need you to take it off I need I need to lay it at your feet I, I don't want to feel like that no more I want to you know I want to be able to move and it was hard like sometimes you would see me stiff because my, my shoulders and back would be really stiff Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. So, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, we come before you as humble as we know how, Lord God. Asking you to first forgive us of our sins and to cast those sins into the lake of forgetfulness. Never again bring it to your attention, Father. Father, we ask that you place forgiveness in the hearts of those who we may have sinned against, Lord God. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for including everything in our lives for your purpose. Lord, we thank you for those things, those mistakes that we made because it, we know that it was you and that it's you that are supposed to get the glory out of that, not us. We didn't, we didn't get ourselves out of these situations. We didn't wake ourselves up this morning. We didn't drive. We're not driving these cars just by ourselves, Lord. You are there in every area, and it, I give you the glory, Lord God. All the glory goes to you for being the Most High God, for being the God that takes time to orchestrate everything, even the hairs on our head, Lord God. You took time to count that. That shows just how much you love me. I don't know nobody in this world, nobody who's ever told me they love me and they knew everything about me. They knew every hair on my head, but Lord, you do. You've counted. If one get plucked, you know which one it was. You know what number it was. Nobody else has that kind of love. And I want to thank you for it. I want to tell you how grateful I am for it. I want to tell you how much I adore you. How much I love you. wife and looking back that we only continue to look forward that we only continue to look at what you're doing and what you're getting ready to do and what not what you've already done that we're not looking for you in the past but we're looking for you in our present and our future we're not looking for what you said but we're looking for what you're saying that you are a God that is still speaking you're a living God so if you're living that means that you're still speaking you still have words for us today father and we're looking to you to hear what you have to say to us today thank you God thank you father father touch each and every one of the people that are hearing the sound of my voice father God touch them Lord God it wasn't by accident that you brought them here it wasn't by accident that you connected them to me it wasn't by accident that they're in this circle Lord God touch them right now father Touch them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, Father God, removing any and all things from them that is not of you. Touch their families. Touch anybody that comes in contact with them, Lord God. If they're, if it's not of you, Father, remove it, Lord. Any plan of the enemy right now, rebuke it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Send it back to hell from which it came, Lord. Father, if there's some things that we just have to go through, Lord God, let them know that you are there with them. That if I brought you to it, I'm going to pull you through it, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for being the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. Lord God, we thank you. Lord, you were talking in the time of the Bible, so that means that you're still talking today, that you haven't changed. 
things around us may have changed, but you have not. That your promises that you promised before still hold true today, Father, and we thank you for it. We thank you for teaching us who we are in you, for helping us understand our worth, and that no mistake can deter you from your worth or your purpose. Help us to remind, help us, help us remind us of that on a constant basis, Father God. Remind us. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we ask these prayers and blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So guess what, guys? I love y'all. There's nothing you can do about it. God loves you more. So just accept it and move on. Have a wonderful and blessed, thankful Thursday. Understand that um, today is a day just to give thanks. Just to tell God you love him and you appreciate everything that he's done. You know, I really want you, when you say thanks to God or when you're having conversation with God, say it out loud. Right? Let God hear it out loud. Have a conversation with him. Right? Just like you and I having a conversation. Have a conversation with God. Say it out loud. Write it down. So many of us is just in our minds and we're just thinking, oh, thank God. We're just thinking. But we never say it out loud. Speak it. Because the one thing that comes with, with that comes with speaking is hearing, right? The more you speak it, the more you're hearing it, right? And faith comes by hearing, right? Hearing the word of God. It doesn't have to always, people always think when you hear that phrase that faith comes by hearing the word of God, that it means that you have to hear it on the radio or you have to hear it from your pastor or you have to hear it from other people speaking into you but sometimes it can just come from you you just speaking the word of god out of your mouth allows your your ear to hear it and that in terms will help strengthen your faith the more you speak about it the more you're speaking about it the more you're hearing it so it doesn't always have to come from somebody else you hearing the word of God doesn't always have to come from somebody else. It can be you speaking it to yourself. And now you're hearing it. Walter says, love you too. And there is nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Thank you. It's so nice to hear it back. <laughs> I think this is the first time anyone has said it back. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate that. It's so nice to hear it back. Um. So, you guys, again, enjoy your day. Um, keep a smile on your face. <laughs> despite how you're feeling. Despite what you're going through. Despite, because, you know, it be days where I really just don't want to get up here. I really am in a place where I'm like, okay, God, I'm not feeling the best today. I don't feel like smiling. I don't feel like talking to people. I don't, I just really want to stay in that space remember we talked about that yesterday i wanted to stay in that space but sometimes you have to like you said train like i said train your mind train your mind not to stay in that space and this this walk is a very i tell you all the time it's a conscious decision you can't just go through it without thinking about it you can't just go through it and just let it be you have to constantly remind this flesh that it is not in control. You have to kill this flesh daily. Daily you have to kill this flesh. This is not something that happens overnight. Daily. this You're going to fight this battle until the day that you die. And until the day that you take your last breath, you're going to fight this battle with you having to kill this flesh. I know that sounds like man that's hard i don't want to i don't want to always be in that space it sounds hard but think of what the alternative is if you don't if you allow this flesh to control you think of what the alternative is suicide 
murder, depression, addiction, to drugs, alcohol, sex, porn, whatever your addiction is, think of what the alternative, alternative is if you don't learn to kill this flesh on a daily basis. Think of that. I think I would rather fight. I think I would rather fight than to be a victim of what the alternative could be for my life. I would rather fight. So to all my fighters who are here, keep fighting. <laughs> keep honoring God. Right? I love you. Have a great day. And if God willing, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.